let's get into this. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Kiriel and today we are reviewing the Jeffree Star Magic Star Concealer and the Magic Star Powder. I've dressed for the occasion in bright pink. <laughs> As you can see I have partial makeup on, I have foundation but you can definitely see my troublesome areas and I'm hoping that this is gonna erase all my mistakes. So as the whole internet knows already, Jeffree Star has just come out with 30 shades of concealer and I believe it was 8 shades of powder. They launched on Beauty Bay and Jeffree Star's website and you can also get them in Morphe stores. Both the concealer and the powder both retail for $22. On Beauty Bay retail for £21 each. The shade that I wanted actually sold out completely on Beauty Bay within like a few minutes of it going live. So I did have to wait for this to come from Jeffree Star's website itself and I had to pay £17 shipping fees so just an FYI if you buy from Jeffree Star from the UK you're going great customs. For the concealer I've got the shade C2 which is fair with neutral undertones and then for the powder I've got the translucent shade which is just a translucent powder. <laughs> so the claims on the concealer are that it's lightweight, blendable, covers blemishes, dark circles and discoloration for a natural satin matte finish. So hopefully it's not going to be too drying on my under eyes because my under eyes are rather dry. Smooth formula contains anti-aging properties. I could do with that. <laughs> Glides over the skin for effortless application. Everything sounds amazing so far. I mean, I like the sound of that. <laughs> Moving on to the powder. It's supposed to be an ultra fine setting powder. The flawless finish designed to blur imperfections, keep oil at bay, lock makeup in place, be super fine and weightless and give an ultimate airbrush effect. Today is going to be a first impressions. I'm going to be testing out the formula, the blendability, the shade and I'm going to try out the powder as well to see the consistency and how it feels on the skin etc etc. So without further ado, wands out. Let's see if this does any magic. Okay guys, so this is what the box looks like. It's very pretty, it's very on brand for Jeffree Star Cosmetics. It's pink with like a little bit of a hot Hollow effect to it. Looks pretty nice. Let's see what's inside because that's what counts, right? <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay. You know, you see things online and you're like, okay, that does look a little bit extra, but then when you get it in person, I mean, <laughs> this is one extra piece of makeup that says right here. This looks like something you would like display. It has the clear plastic at the bottom with the kind of gold. I don't know. This is, looks like some architecture right here. <laughs> Kind of like neck is gold by here and then it has the jewel on top with the star. I do have to say the star is actually rather sharp. <laughs> so be careful you don't want to be like stabbing yourself in the hand. <laughs> I quite like it but I do feel like it does look a little bit childish like if I'm gonna be completely honest. It's actually quite heavy though this whole component so it doesn't feel cheap but just personally it looks a little bit childish for me but it's just my personal taste. <laughs> However, I'm more interested in the formula and how the product performs. The Dofa applicator in here is like a little triangle. It looks like a lipstick kind of applicator but it's supposed to hold the product in there. I'm hoping this is going to be easy to apply and it's not going to be like a multiple dip situation. It also is on a slight angle as well to kind of like hug the under eye I think. So let's just go on in. Actually it's looking very fair. <laughs> I'm hoping when it's all blended in, it's gonna look okay for my skin tone. I like the undertone of this. This is a neutral undertone. I don't know how much of this to put on, so I probably put too much on, but this actually holds a lot of product in it, and I'm finding it easy to hold the component. I thought it might be a little bit awkward, but I'm just holding like the jewel, and I find it easy to hold them. But because I don't know how quickly this is gonna set, I'm gonna do one eye at a time. I'm gonna be using my sponge to blend this out, so let's go on in. I barely feel like I've got anything on. It does feel very moist, <laughs> but I prefer that because I do have kind of dry-ish under eyes, so I don't want it to be dry all under there already, you know? Okay, this is actually very fair. I love a brightening moment. <laughs> So that blended out super easily. The only thing that I'm noticing is it kind of feels like a little bit tacky underneath my eyes, if that makes sense. Like it hasn't completely like set down. And I am noticing it's more like a medium coverage. I wouldn't say it's completely full. If I look down by here, you can still see my kind of blueness coming through. And honestly though, I think I'm gonna have to start using a color corrector because a lot of my concealers still show this purpley color. I am however gonna go in with a little bit more. I haven't dunked this back into the actual 
product. So this is just still one dip. I'm just gonna add a little bit more coverage right here. And because I now know that you have a bit of playtime, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the rest of what's on here. On this side, drag it out. This really does hold a lot. I feel like you get a lot more on the actual wand than what you think you're gonna get. I'm gonna use this as well to kind of like highlight the face. Again, I haven't gone back in. I really like the tip of this for highlighting. You can really get, you know, in there with detailing. Go around the nose a little bit. And I still have more product on this wand. It really does hold a lot, but let's just blend this in. What I like about this is I don't feel nervous. <laughs> like, I don't feel like this formula is like unpredictable, if you know what I mean. I feel like it's quite easy going. It's easy to blend out. Feels like, wait, you can't really go too overboard with it, I feel. It's definitely buildable. just really easy to blend. I really like the fact I'm not like panicking, like, oh my God, I've put it all over my face. I'm just taking my time. Because <laughs> it's not like slipping and sliding everywhere. Like it's in the places where I wanted it and it's blended out really nicely. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more on this side again. This is the same dunk and you can see I'm kind of running out of product on the one now, but I have done my entire face. <laughs> okay, well, I just need to go in with a little bit more for this. So I 100% agree that it is very buildable and lightweight 100%. I'm gonna use the excess on my sponge and just go here as well, just cause why not? I love the way that this is actually looking. It's not like instantly creasing into fine lines underneath my eyes, but I can see it starting to settle a little bit. So it's definitely one that you would need to set. So with that said, let's go into the powder. This looks really cool, but look how big it is. Like the component is massive. I was really toying with getting fair or translucent, but I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to use it So I decided to go with the translucent shade. Let's open this baby up. Oh, what? Oh, no <laughs> Somehow mine's come already kind of like Everywhere <laughs> and I don't even understand how because it's sealed. Oh. I 100% haven't opened this before I haven't looked inside of it and the powder has somehow escaped I don't know how because again the seal is still on it <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna find a way to sort this out better with. <laughs> okay, so I've kind of cleaned it up and just put the excess into the lid. So that's the seal right there. So there we go, seal is now off. <laughs> Bear with me because it's currently going everywhere. Kinda disappointed that it came like this, I'm not gonna lie. I just think when they've like packaged it, it's kind of like been done a little bit carelessly and like, I don't know if you could see, but the powder is kind of like bunched in with the component. Whatever, okay, a little bit of mess I can deal with, it's fine. But it does have like one of these twisty lid things so you like open and close it and you have the little kind of sprinkler thing here. I am gonna go ahead and use what I have in the lid here considering it's quite a lot of powder. What I felt though and what went all over my hands, it feels very finely milled and very soft and silky. So it does feel like it's gonna be a nice powder. So let's look at the concealer after that bit of a debacle, see if it's creased anymore. No, not really. It hasn't really added any more creases or anything like that, but let's go ahead and set it with the powder. Now I've been using my sponge to set everything recently, so I'm going to do that. The concealer feels a little bit tacky, but the kind of settling into my lines has kind of subsided now that I've patted it out a little bit. So let's go in with the powder. I'm going to just dip my sponge in. I'm just going to pat the excess into my hand because I don't really like baking. Let's just go on in. Whoa, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. So this is actually scented slightly. It smells of like candy floss. It's not too like overpowering. I do quite like the scent actually. Oh my God. It's like fresh candy floss. You know when it's like warm, that's how that smells. It is very finely milled, so you might find yourself inhaling it quite a lot. <laughs> I would say it is very, very smoothing. However, I do feel like applying that has maybe taken off the coverage a little bit. Can you see? Just a little bit. And I do find that a lot with loose powders for myself. For some reason, it just takes the coverage off my skin. But I have a feeling this powder would look really nice like all over the face to like really blur your skin because it does have that kind of effect to the under eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and do exactly the same over here. Tapping out the creases and let's set. I want to kind of chisel my cheekbone just a little bit more, so why not try it with the powder? <laughs> I'm just going to liberally apply this to my sponge and let's cut this cheek. Even though this is like a white 
powder. It doesn't seem like it's one of those silica powders where it's just going to like completely just wash out. Like as it kind of blends out, it just molds to your skin tone. It doesn't leave a bright cast of white, which I really like. Oh my God, and it smells so good. <sighs> So nice and I am just gonna go over my forehead a little bit because I haven't yet powdered my skin and I'm looking a little shiny Ooh, that is very smoothing I quite like that actually it's going over my whole face now <laughs> I really like it over my general skin I don't know if I would use it underneath my eyes again just because of the whole coverage situation but that is more of a my skin thing I find that with a lot of translucent powders that I've tried I do just prefer like a press powder for my under eyes just so I get a little bit more coverage but this powder in itself is really blurring it is as it says blurring on the skin and I feel like my pores look really really nice right now I'm quickly just gonna do some contour and then we'll brush off this kind of bake going on all right you guys so I just added some bronzer contour and blush they're all just my favorites which I recently did a video on if you want to check that out I'll leave it in the eye over here but let's dust off this kind of bake and see if it made like a brightening effect to the skin Let's go ahead and dust this off. Okay, yeah, so I can definitely see a brightening effect to my skin. So it does leave a slight cast if you leave it on for a while, but some people like doing this. I personally don't usually do it, but if I want to, I don't know, be a little extra, sometimes I might. <laughs> but a lot of translucent powders that I have used haven't really been the best for my skin tones, so maybe this one will be a winner. I do like the effect that that's given, not gonna lie. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish off my eye makeup, put on a lash, and then we'll do discuss my final thoughts on these two products. All right, everyone. So now that I've finished up my makeup, it's time to discuss what I think about this concealer and the setting powder. I've got to be honest, I prefer the powder over the concealer. I really love the blurring effect. I really love the fact that it was slightly brightening. It's made my skin look very smooth. It's just set my skin really nicely, but hasn't created like a cakey, powdery effect on my skin where I look flat. I put it on the center of my forehead and I still have like a luminosity to my skin, which I really love. Obviously, this is just a first impressions, but I have had this on for about 10 to 15 minutes already and it hasn't started breaking down. I'm still oil free, nothing's budged at the moment. As far as the way my skin feels, it feels so smooth. The powder is just so smoothing and it feels so good on the skin. And as you can see by the little close-ups I did before, I like did my eyes and everything, it is very smoothing and I feel like it's helped my highlight even with application. It's just created a very smooth base for it. Yeah, I think the powder is my favorite thing out of the two. I really want to see how long it will last on my combo to oily skin. I'll definitely be updating you guys in a future video. As far as the concealer is concerned, I just, I don't know. It's like a medium coverage, but it is buildable, but I still feel like the coverage isn't perfect for my skin. The formula isn't drying, which I really like, and you had a little bit of leeway with the time. It didn't completely set down, so it was unmovable. It's very lightweight. You don't feel it under the skin, like I can't feel it now at all, and it didn't excessively crease or anything like that, but I just don't know whether it's an evolution formula for me personally. I really love the Jouer Complete Cover Concealer and I was hoping this might have been like a more creaseless version of it but it just didn't give me enough. It hasn't completely blown me away. I feel like with this one I'd need to use a colour corrector because it didn't cancel out the blue underneath my eyes which it's not supposed to but that just proves to me that it's not a complete coverage for me and personally I'd prefer to have like a fuller coverage concealer that covers everything rather than having to do an extra step with colour correcting. Maybe I'm just in denial, possibly. I am obviously gonna give this another go. This was quite expensive, so I'm definitely gonna wanna use it and I'll update you guys in the future. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> so that is it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed me testing these out for you guys. I am always happy to get my hands on new makeup and try things out. If you're new to the channel and are constantly looking for new reviewers, then why not join this little channel by here? I upload every Wednesday and Saturday for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> all you need to do is hit the red subscribe button down below and the bell button and you'll just get notified whenever I upload. But yeah, that is it from me. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and I hope to see you on the next one. Till then, bye guys. It's like I've forgotten how to do an intro. I don't know what's going on right now. My brain's just not working. What do I say? Is my bacon still on my teeth? Nice. 30 shades. Uh. Earring? If you were not. And it was very blendable. And it was very blendable. No, not vlog.